What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Odin coming back with another video, and today we've got the box office breakdown for the weekend of February 21st to February 23rd, and we have yet another first place victory for Sonic the Hedgehog. Who in their mind would have thought months back when the first trailer for that film came out that it would be a two-time number one at the box office film, let alone a film well on its way to making back its money, let alone a film that actually got a lot of positive reviews from the fans and has been loved by many of the fans of the franchise. That is definitely the story of this weekend is the fact that Sonic the Hedgehog continues to do one, in fact did so well last weekend, it ended up adding 31 theaters, 31 screens, which goes to show you that the film was indeed doing very well. 55% drop from week one to week two, definitely not a terrible drop, especially when you think, take into account that they added theaters on and didn't subtract any or keep no change whatsoever. That's something that we have to keep in mind as well. It's made so far $106.6 million domestically. Very, very impressive. Remember also that these numbers here are estimates, which means they could change. It could tick up. It could tick down. And we'll be following that over here. And also, of course, over on my channel, the Odin's Movie Vlog channel as well. Call of the Wild, which is the brand new film came out. That's the Harrison Ford one with that stupid uh, CGI dog, which just bothers me for so many reasons because I remember some of the greatest films of all time use actual real animals. And something tells me that if Call of the Wild had decided to use a real dog for most of the scenes and just use CGI for dangerous stuff. Like, I understand not using a real dog when you have actual danger involved, but at the very least you could have those, you know, back and forth where you have real dog in most of the scenes opens that emotional weight, adds that emotional weight, especially since based on the trailers, Harrison Ford gives a great performance based on what I'm seeing. And even early reviews are saying Harrison Ford actually tries. He doesn't actually phone it in for this performance. And so it would have been great if he had gone on to be going toe to toe with an actual real life dog than a stupid, terrible looking CGI dog instead. But this also, as far as anything significant about the film, is really the first foray from 20th Century Studios. So this is going to be the first official film to be theatrically released without the 20th Century Fox logo. Remember that Disney decided to drop the Fox name from its logo, and many inside sources say it's because they did not want their studio to be associated with Rupert Murdoch. So they changed the name, not because they wanted to have a new title, not because they wanted to have a new legacy, but because of freaking politics, which should not, should not surprise anyone when it comes to talking about Disney. But Call of the Wild had $24.8 million, which might seem like a decent amount of money, except the film costs like well over $100 million, which means the film costs with marketing around $150 plus million to make. So it's got to make a crap ton of money at the box office in order for it to break even. There's a good chance based on this number right here, and also depending on what the box office drop off for next week is going to be, the film could lose money. And I'll have more on that as the numbers come in, because right now all we really have are full domestics estimates. We don't have the full uh, you know, international numbers, and that, of course, could make all the difference. Birds of Prey has another 60% drop, dropping out of 671 screens. That, to me, is pretty, <laughs> uh, pretty amazing that it's still playing at 3,500 when the film is really not doing all that well. Made $7 million. Brahms the Boy 2, which is one of the most terrible names for a uh, for a horror film, made $5.9 million. I imagine that film's going to be profitable because when it comes to cheap horror films, they just don't need to make a lot of money in order to break even. And rounding out the top five, Bad Boys for Life, keeping making money, only having a 50% drop still after six weeks, almost at 3,000 screens, uh, made another 5.86 million, 50% drop. Again, very, very impressive that Bad Boys for Life is doing as well as it's doing. But we're going to be focusing on just a few movies this weekend. So Sonic the Hedgehog, as you can see, $149 million. This number will tick up as the international box office still needs to update. So far, it's made $106 million domestically, though, which is incredibly impressive. This is a film that's well on its way, not just to profitability, but also on making a decent amount of money in the pro or rather not just a breaking even, but also a decent amount of profitability is what I meant to say. Call of the Wild, as you can see, did decently in the domestic marketplace, does not seem to be having a very good showing overseas so far at $40.2 million. As I said, this is a film that needs to make a pretty, pretty decent amount of change to break even. Yeah, I actually underscored that it costs $125 million to produce that film. That's without marketing. With marketing, then you'd have to say this cost around around 170, $180 million to make and making $40 million 
that ain't good. Because remember, studio only gets about 60% of that. Then you got to subtract how much it costs. This film is definitely right now in the negative category. And uh, based on what the second weekend load number is going to look like, I can see this being a giant financial loss uh, for the studio. And of course, also for Harrison Ford as well. So Call of the Wild underneath the banner of the 20th Century Studios, which means it's under Disney. So congratulations, Disney has yet another box office bomb on their hands. Some will try and say technically it's under a Fox, but it was it was under production as a Fox production. So you can't blame Fox. You can't blame Disney. Well, I will, because they took on Fox all of their assets, all of their movie titles, and therefore all of their financial liabilities. So if this film loses money, Disney loses money. And the last one, of course, is Birds of Prey, which, again, $72 million here domestically, not very impressive. $101 million internationally, not that impressive. This number right here, the international box office, will change. And the reason why I'm focusing on that number is because at the end of the day today, we'll have a good idea. And I honestly think that Santa Hedgehog, once those international numbers start to come in, will end up having made more in two weeks than Birds of Prey, which to me is a pretty big slap in the face when you look at where this film came from and also the story behind it. They listened to the fans. The fans came out in droves to support it. And guess what? It's doing very well financially. Birds of Prey, on the other hand, crapped all over the fans, didn't care about the fans at all. And fans, guess what? Are mostly rejecting this movie, a film set to possibly lose money at the box office. But we'll be following it to see just how much money it loses or if it's somehow able to make just enough to break even. But that's going to be it, uh, it for me today. So what are your thoughts about it? Are you excited to see Birds of Prey not really doing that well at the box office on The Hedgehog continuing its number one run? And again, I cannot wait to see what the numbers are internationally after this. But also the big one, of course, the, for new films, Call of the Wild. Do you think that Call of the Wild is a film that's worth seeing? Do you get bothered by the CGI dog and the commercials? For me, the commercials alone just totally turn me off from this film. I actually hear the movie is not bad because of Harrison Ford. He carries the film, apparently. He actually gives a damn about his performance. And so it's just sad that they had to trade that off by having a CGI animal instead of an actual dog in it as well. Because as we all know, you gotta love the dog, you gotta pet the doggo and that's one of the reasons why i love for movies like john wick 3 because they have real doggos in those movies and guess what they're doing stunts and they're safe but anyway let me know your thoughts about this and all the things you talked about in the comment section below if you like this video smash the like button give us a subscribe go check me out over at odin's movie blog for more box office breakdowns especially once these international numbers come in i also have a video coming up if not out already about comparison okay, the comparison between the rise of skywalker's box office to not just rogue one but also to joker and whether i think it's going to end up beating joker's box office run by the end of it so if you're interested in that go check out my main channel you guys are all awesome amazing beautiful people have a wonderful day and as always God bless.